Pidurangala, situated in a beautiful location, was the only vihara that the king could see from his palace on the Sigiriya rock. The lion staircase, plateau with its chambers, buildings and pavilions, and the great lion itself, is no more. Today, what remains are the two colossal pores and a mass of brick masonry surrounding the ancient limestone steps. Observing what remains, one could believe that there would have been a majestic face of a lion affording a vision of grandeur and majesty from the gatehouse to the palace on the summit. The lion seems to have been in a crouching position, represented by its paws, head and shoulders projecting from the rock. To build his kingdom with all these facilities, Kashyapa would have been economically stable. The coins that were unearthed during excavations reveal that at the time of King Kashyapa, foreign trade had been at a very high level. Trade during this era would have been for gems, elephants, spices, etc. Through foreign exchange and friendship, Kashyapa would have been able to economically stabilize with technical assistance coming from the delegates. The terrace gardens is at the summit of the rock. The pleasure garden is on the west bank of the rock. Mr. Seneca Bandaranayaka, who excavated this area, says that apart from the two gardens mentioned earlier, there are two more areas found with similar constructions. These are also believed to be water gardens of the palace. These gravings show that there had been buildings built on these rocks. 90% of the buildings are believed to have had no retaining walls and had been open buildings. Through the paws of the lions are gently sloping rock faces with an ascending gallery and stair which lead up to the royal palace. This is considered to be the earliest surviving palace in Sri Lanka. There would have been soft carpets laid on these stairways for the king to ascend. The palace, the center of the royal city, lies about 180 meters above the surrounding plain. It is the geometrical center of the ancient modular grid on which the plan of Sigria is built. While imagining all the grandeur it would have had and to know that all this was done by Kashyapa himself, can one believe it? Having been able to draw the attention of the whole world, Sigiriya brings forth a legend that we could be proud of. Having built a palace on a rock, how could he have visualized his city when he looked down upon his kingdom? Wouldn't Kashyapa have resembled a god?
This is made of rock, it would have made a comfortable throne for the king. The king would have enjoyed his evenings watching dancing and singing of the damsels. It was believed that if the king was happy, his kingdom would be happy too. They also believed that when the king enjoys with the court ladies, the city would be self-sufficient. Therefore, it is believed that every year the king and his ministers held festivals to this effect to bring in prosperity to their land. A lot has been written on these festivals and the times the king spent in the water gardens. These would have created such a wonderful atmosphere that the poets could not have resisted writing about it. during the Kashipa era had been self-sufficient. There is evidence that agriculture had been the main means of livelihood. Erandagala Vava, Maha Vava, Vavala, Kiriyoya are lakes that provided sufficient water for agriculture. Therefore, food was in plenty for those who slaved to build the Sigriya complex. The demise of Kashyapa is legendary. Mughalan, who was in exile in India, got back to Sri Lanka with his troops to fight Kashyapa to regain the kingship he lost. Kashyapa was ready for this battle. 
The king, having fought his enemies bravely, saw suddenly that his troops were abandoning him through a misunderstanding. Having been isolated, it is believed that he had reached the vicinity of Sigiriya and cut his head off with his own sword. Though this is said to be the end of Kashyapa, how could one say that Sigiri Kashyapa died? I will never die. As long as the Sigiri rock exists, I too will live with it. Sigiri would stand as a monument to show that Kashyapa has used his powers for the well-being of himself and his countrymen. Had he used it to show his might, that would have left yet another cruel king in the history of our country. Before I depart, I would like to mention this. All this time it was Kashyapa who got all the credit for the wonders you saw at Sigiriya. Should only I get the credit? I am the one who got this made. I am the one who gave the ideas, instructions and life to do it. But what about those thousands of workers who helped me build up my dream world? Why won't anybody talk about them? Through Sigiriya, I see the tears that roll down their cheeks. I smell their sweat. Yes, they were also people like me who had courage and determination. Through Sigiriya, you see me, but I see them. <laughs>